Hi USCIICS and maraming salamat for inviting me for your event. Nagpapasalamat ako kasi invite niyo ako although nasa abroad ako and I couldn't make it there physically. Pero thankful pa rin ang buong Balete City video game project uh, sa pag-invite niyo sa amin. Nag-send kayo ng mga questions for me to answer so I would like to expound about it. But before that, I would like to introduce to you uh, a little bit of background dun sa project namin. So actually, we are doing a third-person RPG game based on Philippine mythology. Pag sinabi natin Philippine mythology, ito yung tungkol sa mga kapre, diwata, inkanto, and anything na mga stories and tales sa natin bilang mga Pilipino. So we're working on that. We're work working on a wonderful project, making it into a video game. Makikita nyo yung marami pang details, mga footages, test footages, mga character designs sa aming uh, Facebook at Patreon page. So, ayan, hindi na ako magpapa ligoy ligoy pa. Pumunta na tayo sa prinamis kong topic na pag-uusapan natin. Binigyan nyo ako ng mga questions, iisa-isahin natin yon. Ibibigay ko yung mga thoughts and opinions ko sa mga queries ninyo. So, una-una, with your advice, anong pwede namin pag-aralan na basic things if ever gusto namin i-pursue ang pag-game dev? may na-encounter kami na ibang game dev na pwede sa web app. So, unang-una kasi, like me, hindi ko talaga plinano ang path ng game development. Na-discover ko lang yung uh, path na to nung ang pinakaunang incident kasi, I mean, yung nag-ignite ng fire sa puso ko para uh, mapunta sa game development is I discovered about Philippine mythologies years ago when I was working with my undergraduate thesis. I was working on the beliefs and cultures of the Tiboli people. Upon delving and discovering about their beliefs, na inganyo ako, kumbaga, nag-create siya ng fire sa heart ko para mangilatis, kumbaga, to dig deeper. Upon discovering it, na ang dami pala, ang dami pala nating mga wonderful creatures na mga hindi kilala. Even ako, nung mga nabasa ko yung mga accounts about kay Bathala, si Dapang, Magwayen, yung mga gods and goddesses na they have amazing backgrounds, amazing stories, amazing connections with uh, different cultural groups in the Philippines. Nag-research ako nang nag-research until I found a lot of these accounts throughout the different parts of the Philippines. So, meron sa north, meron sa south, meron sa western, uh, meron sa mga Ifugao, meron sa mga Tibuli, sa mga, mga iba't ibang grupo. So, they have different kinds of uh, stories and uh, tales na at some point nakita ko din na parang nakakalimutan na natin parang kokonti na lang yung nakakaalam and ang nakakatakot niyan malapit na siyang mabura well thanks to our current contemporary amazing comics artists like Kael Molo na gumawa ng Agla si Mervyn Malonzo na gumawa ng Tabi po those are yung mga authors na ginamit nila yung mga Philippine yung mga accounts, yung mga tales and stories of Philippine mythology so they turned it into a contemporary piece at ginawa nila itong artwork so by that they found a way to expose and to somewhat preserve our culture, the stories and beliefs into their work, work of art, just like comics or paintings or whatsoever. Ako, may mga stories na nagko-connect-connect sa utak ko, sa mind ko while I'm researching about this, these creatures nga, these uh, entities, and then I somehow decided to write it down in paper. Although, hindi ako marunong magsulat, given naman na meron tayong uh, strength and weaknesses, so I'm more on the creative side but not on writing lalong lalo sa grammar so i found people to help me turn my ideas into writing into a, a noble form moreover yung novel na yon i decided na kailangan niya ng visuals kailangan kung ma turn it into visuals nga so kailangan kung gawing yung novel ko into a graphic novel so i started drawing pages of my comic turning the novel into a graphic novel and then Later on, as I move forward to my career as a graphic artist, graphic designer, I learn a lot of different skills na hindi ko na namamalaya na these are the requirements pala para mag game development. Unang-una, natuto akong mag 3D, 3D modeling. Tapos natuto rin akong mag lagyan ng texture yung 3D. Natuto akong mag rig, lagyan ng skeleton yung 3D para gumalaw yung 3D. 
natuto akong mag 3D render, natuto akong mag a little bit of animation, and then natuto akong mag programming na hindi naman ganun ka intense dun sa pagpo-program but I have learned the basics of uh, programming like some programming languages. I started loving the codes when I was working with websites actually. I came upon WordPress although you don't have to code it from the back end. What happened is I found um, a technology, a software na pwede kong manipulahin to meet my needs, to meet to come up with the product. Yung WordPress kasi, it has these certain limitations somehow. Some point, meron kang kailangang i-tweak sa codes niya back end para magawa niya yung gusto mong mangyari. So from that, nag-start akong matuto ng mga codes ng mga languages little by little. So PHP, although hindi pa marunong, Java. Ang pinaka-basic foundation ko is I found this software online. It's a business tool na Excel. So it has some formulas sa Visual Basic na programming and I am really curious kung paano siya nagwo-work. So what I did, even though wala akong background sa coding and programming, I tried to decipher every formulas na nilagay nila. So somehow some point nag reverse engineer ako. So I started to research about dun sa mga codes na ginamit. Well, it's minor thing compared sa mapapag-aralan nyo as uh, computer science students na matututo kayo about other languages such as C++, C, C Sharp. But yun yung naging foundation ko to learn deeper, to research more about programming. Ayan na nga. So nakompleto ko na yung mga skills na kailangan ko to make a game. So I decided to turn my comic into a game kasi ang inspiration behind that is when I was watching God of War na amaze ako on how those studios abroad can make a game out of mythologies about the culture. So sabi ko, what if itong larong ito is based from the Philippines? What if uh, the characters are based from the Philippine mythologies? Anong magiging itsura ng gameplay pa sa Philippines ginanap? What I am telling here is that yes, you can be a game dev kung ang focus mo is to make it a career and pumasok sa mga sa mga studios and to help them make a game or you can make a game out of your passion. So, i-disregard mo na kung kapatok ba ito or uh, i-embrace ba siya ng tao or may market ba ito or okay na bang market ng game din sa Philippines. If uh, you started it with your passion of of your fire to tell a story, to make it into a game, you don't have to worry about other things. Though, right now, kikwento ko sa inyo, like our project right now, Though it started as a passion project, somehow, at some point, we have to sustain it until it can reach to the publishing stage. So in order for it to, kasi masyado siyang uh, maluwang, malawak na project, to shorten the development stage, I have to tap on other talent of other people, like other professionals, just like 3D modelers, 3D programmers, to help me with the project. If you're involving a lot of people already, you have to plan the business side of things. You have to consider a lot of things pag nag-start na yun, like how much yung presyo, kung ilan ba yung projected sales unit mo, or kung working on this project is worth it after you publish it sa market. Hindi mo matatanggal kasi yung business side of things, but what I'm trying to say is if it's it's a project that's coming from your heart, you don't have to worry about the business side of things because there's a lot of people that will help you to finish your product or project if they feel that they can connect with your project or they can relate with you na meron kayong same goal, same uh, motive of uh, producing a project, a game out of love. So, yun nga, babalik tayo sa kung ano bang advice na pag-aralan, basic things if ever gusto namin uh, magpuso mag-game dev. So, ang kailangan mo kasi diyang malaman kung ano, ano ba yung format ng game na gusto mong gawin. Kasi there are different kinds of games and via these different kinds of games, meron ding different ways of doing it, making it. Depende kasi, as early as now, find out which one, kung ano talaga yung gusto ng heart mo, kung ano talaga yung gusto ng gusto mong i-research or gawin, i-dedicate yung time. For instance, meron tayong uh, mga multiplayers, 
mga simulations, mga adventure, mga real-time strategy, mga puzzle, mga 2D or 3D shooter, first player shooter, mga sports. So we have a wide range of games for you to choose. Kapag nakapili ka na, depende sa napili mo, there are different kinds of skills required by each. Kunwari kung 2D ka, kailangan mong gumawa ng mga assets na 2D like flat images instead of kung panwari 3D kailangan mong marunong kang gumawa ng 3D model kung kailangan mo ng physics based na game kailangan mong matuto ng heavy on the physics on the coding on the mathematics side of the games what I'm trying to say is kumbaga figure out as early as now which one will excite you most and kung ano yung feeling mo mag enjoy ka na gagawin yung tipong kahit na i-dedicate mo yung time and taon and effort and energy hindi siya uh, sayang it's a worth it na project if you learn which type of game are you planning to make and kung uh, na-pinpoint mo na kung ano yung mga skills na kailangan mong matutunan kailangan mo ding alamin kung ano yung mga softwares and tools na kakailangan mong aaralin in order to to finish the game, to build the game. For instance, sa 2D game, syempre kailangan marunong kang mag Photoshop. Marunong kang is either Photoshop or marunong kang mag Corel or any uh, graphics editing uh, software. Um, sa 3D, syempre kailangan kang kahit isa at least isang software na 3D editing or 3D modeling. For instance, Blender. Blender is an open source software or Maya or 3ds Max or Google SketchUp If there are different varieties of softwares na uh, kailangan mong matutunan Actually, the idea behind it is uh, you should always try to know kung anong mga resources na pwede mong gamitin and one, isa sa kinds of resources are the softwares and tools that you can use. For instance, sa Bileti City, marami kaming mga softwares na kailangang alam. For instance, the Unreal Engine, kailangan namin Unreal Engine kasi yun nga yung game in engine ng Bileti City game, yung uh, Blender for creating uh, 3D models. Kailangan din namin matutunan ng Marvelous Designer. Yun yung gumagawa ng mga costumes ng characters. Kailangan din namin matutunan yung uh, Substance Painter para magkaroon ng details yung mga textures namin. There are wide range of softwares out there. Some of them are paid, some of them are kumbaga, free, free tool just like Blender. But the point is knowing which one will benefit you the most. Most probably, dapat kayo meron na kayong Photoshop and dapat marunong na kayo mag-Photoshop lahat even beginning to to start in game development. Pero, yun nga, you can always outsource naman. In game development, it's not one-man crew. Kumbaga, hindi kailangan ikaw lang gumagawa. So, you can always tap on other people's talent as long as meron kayong mutual na benefit from from the project. The idea is the workload, you can share it na hindi lang galing sa'yo, pwede mong i-share it sa ibang tao. Actually, that's wise move if you want a quality game. Kasi uh, hindi naman tayo lahat magaling Kumbaga, alam natin lahat yung skills na required. Kunwari, magaling ka mag-programming pero hindi ka magaling gumawa ng graphics. So, hindi naman lahat ng tao ay alam na lahat ang parts ng game development. So, meron at meron siyang strength and meron at meron siyang weaknesses. Just like me, hindi ako magaling sa 3D animation but I can do 3D modeling. Hindi rin ako masyadong magaling sa 3D sculpting but I can do the level design, concept design and I can do the programming. It's up to you to manage the people, manage your resources to come up with the, with the project. So, pang-apat, ang pinaka-importante kasi, pinaka-importante to, i-disregard mo na yung tatlong na una. Pag wala ka nito, kumbaga wala kang game na may essence. Kumbaga, ang pinaka-essence talaga nito is yung pang-apat. Ang tinutukoy ko is about the story, topic, and themes ng uh, game mo. Unang-una, kailangan mong mag-come up with the story and kailangan mong mag- come up with the concept and tema ng game mo. Yun talaga 
yung pinaka foundation ng lahat. So before even starting to uh, learn a new software or learn a new skill and figuring out what kind of game, dapat meron ka ng story, idea, or concept na gagawin. Kasi doon mo i-revolve lahat eh. Doon mo i-revolve yung game creation mo, yung game development mo, doon sa kwento na meron ka. For the Balete City, uh, it was the story about the Philippine mythologists that was transformed into a game development project. What I'm telling is, dapat meron kang kwentong maibabahagi, dapat meron kang bagong fresh idea na gustong i-share bago ka pa man din mag-game development. Wrap up! Yung mga advice ko, figure out what kind of game you, you really want to pursue. Pangalawa, kailangan mong malaman kung ano yung mga skills required in order to develop that game and make it up until the publishing stage. Pangatlo, kailangan mong matuto ng mga software and tools na kakailanganin mo to build the game. And pangapat, yung pinaka-importante is uh, dapat meron kang story may meron kang idea at meron kang konsepto na iba bahagi before even making a game. Move to the next question which is though hindi po ko sure kung patok or in demand ba yun, will it be great start in web app the game dev since iba sa amin web app and mobile app ang specialization track namin. Una muna, I'll turn you sa aming project sa Balete City Game. Nung na-release namin yung mga teasers and mga first looks about sa game, maraming nag-comment na ang, ang mga Pinoy is more on mobile gaming na ngayon. So, limited lang yung mga nasa PC or sa console something like that. So, parang sinasabi nila na ang market is nandun talaga sa mobile gaming just like for instance yung Mobile Legends napakasikat niya kasi nga nasa platform siya ng mobile or nasa cellphone nga so it means na merong malaking market ng game development sa mobile pero what I'm trying to tell is what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter kung anong platform kasi yung sa inyo ipapublish ang sinasabi ko nga is talaga yung uh, story or content ng game na gusto nyong i-release. So, kung, kung maganda yung content, kung may excite yung mga maglalaro, even if it's in PC or even if it's in mobile, bebenta at bebenta to kasi nga, story sells. Meron at merong market yan sa kahit anong mga platform, no matter what. But ang pinakaunang kailangan nyong alamin talaga is kung ano yung story na gusto nyong ikwento about dun sa game. It, the game kasi it's not about just playing or pag uh, i-entertain. It's about immersing yourself into into a world, into a story. Kung baga, kung paano ka nakaka-connect doon sa gameplay ng isang laro. Even if it's uh, you're not selling the game as as a game per se. Kung baga, dahil game ito, kailangan yung bilhin or game ito. There's more about it. Meron pang wider perspective doon sa paggawa ng game. So for us, for instance, the Balete City game, it's to educate, promote, and to to preserve kung ano man yung kultura yung mga uh, stories about the creatures that we have find your story and find a way of telling it sa game sabi ko nga dito gumawa ka ng game out of your passion and the market will embrace it no matter what pag yung game mo is out of love gamers kasi can actually feel it it doesn't matter kung ano pa basta if it's a labor of love you can get your message across study niches and what what is not in the markets. So, may tinatawag tayo yung niche marketing. Mali kasi yung thinking na dapat pag gumawa ka ng isang product, it's for the general public. Ang natutunan ko sa branding and marketing is never ever do something that is general. Kasi hindi yun, yung product na yun, out of general thinking, hindi niya kaya makipag-usap sa, sa tao na specific. So dapat if you're doing something, it should have been designed na makipag-usap sa niche. Ang niche na tinatawag is a certain number of people na meron silang same interest sa isang bagay. Hello guys! So, nandito ako ngayon sa aming office. So, kakatapos lang yung trabaho ko. Ito gabi, hindi kami natapos sa pag-record ng video kasi nalobat yung camera ko. But I will try to answer your questions dahil medyo limited yung time. Kailangan ko ng i-record kung kahit nasan pa man ako para lang matapos yung video. Kumipa tayo ng pwesto. Okay. 
Maglalakad-lakad ako. Ayan, para makita nyo yung environment ng UAE. Anyways, ayan. So, next topic natin is paano ma-achieve yung realism. Yung realism kasi, it's relative to the style or concept of the game na, na pinili nyo. Kung, kung 2D siya, paano, paano nyo i-approach realism sa 2D? Maybe doon siguro sa fighting, sa gameplay, yung uh, mga effects or yung interaction or yung images na may kung realism siya sa visually meron siyang uh, shadow maganda yung kulay, realistic yung rendering kung sa 3D naman maraming bagay kasi yung realism eh. unang una sa environment kailangan mo ng ambient occlusion kailangan mo ng fog kailangan mo ng lighting and shadow which is very different doon sa 2D, 2D creation, 2D game creation, and 3D game creation. So, it boils down doon sa knowing what format you would want to pursue and kung paano nyo i-achieve. So, knowing the format that you want to pursue plus the concept plus the idea equals the style kung, kung paano nyo i-approach yung realism na tinatawag. For instance, sa Balete City, ang realism na ina-achieve natin is oh, syempre dun yung mga trees, yung environment na kailangan mukha siyang totoo as well as binabalansin natin yan para realistic nga siya pero kaya pa rin siyang uh, pagganahin sa, sa PC or sa low-end na, na games. Maglalakad tayo habang nag-record ng video para naman maisip ko kung ano yung yung sagot dun sa mga tinatanong nyo. So, according dito, do we need to emphasize mathematics in terms of producing a good movement para sa game development? Well, unang-una, uulitin ko na nga na uh, kailangan mong malaman kung anong style yung gagamitin mo. Siyempre, kung physics-based to, kailangan mong maganda yung mathemat na yung, yung logic, yung computational, yung programming niya behind dun sa game. Pero kung kunwari, 3D game, just like sa Unreal Engine, like Blueprint, medyo heavy rin yung logical programming niya. Pero hindi masyado doon sa mga computational equations na tinatawag. So, depende pa rin. So, may mga games na kailangan mong paalam ka sa mathematics. May mga games na uh, hindi. Like, siguro yung mga puzzle games or yung mga 2D na pang phone games. Pero depende pa rin. So, for instance, sa Balete City, ang kailangan mo is kailangan mong marunong ka ng basic math kasi kailangan ng computation ng mga skills, ng mga statistics like yung health, yung attack, yung, yung buhay ng AI, yung, yung logic ng AI kasi syempre yung AI kailangan mo siyang i-program na pupunta sa isang, isang lugar from one point to another ipoprogram mo din siya na kapag meron siyang nakitang character, i-attack niya yung character. So, lahat ng mga yon ay kinocode gamit yung arithmetic o yung mga uh, logics na meron dun sa code. So, for instance, sa blueprint, sa blueprint may mga mathematical operations kang kailangan gawin. Pero, ang take ko kasi din, hindi mo naman kailangan ng, ng masyadong malalim na understanding, kumbaga, na parang pang scientist na or pang mathematician na yung mga problems. Basic operations, basic math, kaya mo nang mag-code plus coding and programming. Kaya mo nang gumawa ng AI na nag-roam around yung aatake pag merong character. So, it's not necessary. It depends on, again, doon the, sa format na kailangan, yung format na gusto nyong gawin. And as well as doon sa style na gusto nyong i-achieve. So, merong uh, parang story na nagbi-build up sa isip ko and I decided, one day I decided to write it down kasi nga, sabi nga, kung merong kang idea and bagong concept, dapat ilabas at ilabas mo ito. No matter what, kung hindi pa ito maganda or hindi pa ito solido or polido, dapat merong kang notebook or siguro sa akin, Word or Excel na dapat dun mo siya i-let out lahat para minsan kasi pag may idea ka sa utak mo tapos hindi mo mailabas, parang di ba uulit-ulitin mong iisip-isipin yung nakaka-bother, nakaka-irita. So, even though hindi ako marunong magsulat, ay na, nakahanap ako ng kaibigan na nagtsaga na magbasa doon sa novel na isinulot ko. At, it, at it, yung something, yung from raw, we turned it in into something uh, readable na matatawag nga siyang novel. Sabi ko, 
I have a story and why, why not do something? So I have uh, a draft novel na pwede kong gawing comics. So I started to draw each chapters, although isang chapter pa lang nang nagagawa ko, actually dalawa, chapter 1 and chapter 2. Ginawa ko siyang comics. So paano ngayon siya naging uh, game? I am employed as a great designer here abroad and I've been working as a graphic uh, designer nga as a designer five, five years na. So as I am working in a small company, I have some ample time para mag, mag-aral ng mga bagong skills. So yung mga skills na yon, yun yung required doon sa work ko para uh, kumbaga to level up my, my work aside from what I have learned from the university. So I tried to study about 3D, 3D arts, digital arts, like, uh, and then, na natuto ko mag 3D texturing, natuto ko mag 3D rigging, 3D sculpting, 3D rendering, something like that, and 3D animation, a little bit, kasi hindi pa naman ako magaling mag-animation. Until later on, I found out na if these are the skills required in making a 3D 3D interactive game or 3D role-playing game, RPG game. So, sabi ko, I have the uh, basic skills. I have the story. So, uh, why don't I make it into a game? Kasi nga, as I was being exposed to the Philippine mythological creatures and beliefs of the the Philippines, I found out na konti na lang din ang nakakaalam or konti na lang din ang may interest sa mga bagay na yan. So, so unfortunately, pag titignan natin, halos wala nang nakakaalam. Hindi, hindi ko nga din alam sa sarili ko na napakadami pala ng mga uh, nilalang na meron sa na pinaniniwalaan ng mga dating mga Pilipino, like mga Asian Filipino. Bef- before pa dumating mga Spanyol, so, merong mga tik-tik, merong mga Sigbin, may mga Beroka, may mga Magindaras na uh, ang alam ko lang noon dati Aswang and Manananggal and Tikbalang, Ka- Capri and uh, Diwata. So mga basic lang. Meron pa palang mga worlds na aside from the human world, meron pa palang mga uh, realms na hindi ko pa alam. It turned out na hindi lang ako like marami sa atin ang hindi hindi na expose sa mga sa mga bagay nito. So, ang nangyayari, nakakalimutan na siya. So, wala, wala nang magpapasa pa ng knowledge na galing pa sa mga ninuno. So, one way of siguro na isip ko na one way of advocating about the Philippine mythology is turning it into an artwork, preserving it into an art form. So, since I I wanted to expose or yung mga tao nga ma-educate about it, why not make it into a game? Kasi ang game nga is uh, widely accepted by the community, the, by the uh, Filipino. So, if I a game, yung platform na yun is uh, mas malawak yung marireach niya, mas maraming tao yung marireach niya. And plus, yung mga younger generations din ay, ay may expose. I started to render all the characters hanggang sa nakita ko nga yung uh, Unreal Engine na pwede ko pala siyang gamitin together with other softwares para makakamap ako into a game to, to make my dream possible, to make my uh, goal possible. So I started watching tutorials. Do Unreal Engine kasi napaka-overwhelming na software niya kasi madami nga siyang nagagawa. Isa siya sa mga pinaka-high-tech na technology or software na meron dito sa sa world sa na ginagamit ng mga professionals. It did turn out na nung nagustuhan ko na siyang uh, matutunan, libre na siya. Hindi, hindi mo na siya kailangang bayaran. Unlike Unity, Unity kasi may bayad eh. So it's a uh, uh, open source. Given na kapag nakagawa ka ng isang uh, laro, pag ipapublish mo na siya, doon ka palang magbabayad. Pero, ang thinking ko that time, sige na lang, uh, aralin ko na lang. So, na, uh, nag-spend ako ng siguro one, one lesson a day na aralin ko tapos gagawin ko sa Unreal. Hanggang sa nakabuo na ako ng uh, inventory system, ng uh, yung basic movement, forward, backward, yung fighting skill, yung animation, yung AI system, ganyan. Hanggang sa naging nabuo na nga siya. So, bakit Unreal Engine yung ginamit 
ko ginamit ko as a gaming engine by Lete City video game kasi I believe that there are lots of free and open so software na kailangan mo lang aralin, kailangan mo lang matutunan kasi sa Philippines, uh, ang, ang nakikita natin dyan is medyo nahuhuli siya when it comes to technology. Ironic nga kasi napakaraming mga softwares dyan na available for free, even for free na kayang mag-come up ng magandang output like Hollywood effects, like realistic rendering. Ganyan. So isa yun sa Unreal Engine. So uh, parang naging idea ko is to bring that technology and make a project out of it na towards uh, Filipino consumers. So it's like bringing a technology to the uh, Philippine scene. Gusto ko rin na parang ma-inspire yung mga uh, future game developers kayo na maghanap pa ng mga resources, maghanap pa ng mga softwares na pwedeng gamitin, pwedeng itap, uh, pwedeng i-combine-combine to come up with a uh, high-end product. Pwede nating ipagmalaki kahit na hindi siya mapansin abroad at least mag-come up with a product na high quality for the Filipino Pinoy consumers, ba? Diba? So, so, I encourage everyone of you kung gusto mag-move forward sa 3D development, try nyo ang uh, Unreal Engine or kaya Unity. Depende kasi, kasi I feel like mas uh, open source or mas user-friendly yung uh, Unreal Engine kaysa sa Unity. And, uh, ang isa pang factor dyan is about dun sa blueprint. Uh, as you know, my background is on uh, making arts. So I have never been into formal education sa programming. So medyo sablay, kumbaga mababaw lang yung alam ko tungkol sa codes. But uh, fortunately, sa Unreal Engine, meron silang tinatawag na blueprint. Blueprint is is a cod coding language na visual. So ibig sabihin para siyang... Uh, Sir, card, cards na i-connect connect mo siya sa isa-isa. So, napaka uh, beneficial yun sa akin kasi I cannot code using the terminal. Using the black and white na codes with the coding language. So, yung, yung, yung isip ko nag-work lang sa visual. So, via blueprint, na kaya kong mag-code, na kaya kong mag-program dun sa mga basic na kailangan namin for Balete City uh, video game. Pangalawa, bakit ko pinili ang Unreal Engine? Kasi uh, uh, maraming uh, support online. So, yung mga i-troubleshoot mo ng mga problema, yung mga ma-face mong problem, meron ng uh, mga naka-encounter ng mga problem na yun. So, kapag sinerch mo sa, sa internet, meron at meron silang mga solutions na nanailagay, meron, meron na silang mga shortcuts na nagawa at mga recommendations na nagawa na hindi mo na kailangang i-experiment pa or hindi mo na kailangang uh, gawin pa yung isolve yung problem all by yourself. So, there is a wide range of forums and wide range of communities na pwede mong maging resource, maging uh, reference sa kung ano man yung uh, mga problems na mag sa habang gumagamit ka ng Unreal Engine. Pangatlo, yung marketplace. Sa game development kasi kailangan mo ng assets. Assets is either you build it from scratch or you can uh, buy it from designers or studios. So sa Unreal Engine, meron silang marketplace na doon binibenta lahat ng mga assets na kailangan mo sa pagbuo ng game. Merong mga 2D assets, may mga 3D assets, pati mga sounds, uh, SFX, VF, VFX, mga projects, mga 3D models, nandun na lahat. So, uh, sa Unreal Engine, ibig sabihin, meron kang isang place na kung kailangan mo ng ganito, meron kang pondo, doon mo na lang siya bibilhin. Kung, kung kunwari wala kang mga in-house designers or in-house na 3D modelers, pwede mo na lang bilhin yung mga assets mo. Una-una, user-friendly siya. Pangalawa, maraming uh, communities and forums na meron siya. Pangatlo, isa siya sa... Uh, pangatlo... Meron siyang mark marketplace na kung saan mo pwedeng kunin yung mga assets. Pangapat, uh, blueprint yung coding niya. At uh, to top it all, isa siya sa pinaka uh, high-end na software na maraming possibilities ka na pwedeng gawin. So, uh, in general, yes, uh, game development is a career na... 
na papasukan mo pero it can be the other way then uh, game developing can be a passion yung yung each mo to to share a story to make a game that is immersive and uh, interactive na gusto mong iparating yung mga mensahe mo like tulak yung drug uh, it's about drug game d- drug addiction game so it's about your passion to tell a story to 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 make a project that is bigger than you pwede rin na pumunta ka dun sa uh, game development na sa career pero uh, medyo narrow yung market sa Philippines pa. Siguro abroad, yeah, you can uh, be hired and have a good salary sa uh, game development but not yet in the Philippines. So soon siguro if, if we continue to um, step up and uh, walang nang gawa ng game, siguro mabubuhay at mabubuhay din yung game development scene at magkakaroon na ng course sa mga schools and matututo na yung mga mga estudyante formally, di ba? So, we don't know the future but what I want you to do is keep uh, stepping up, uh, keep uh, jumping out of the box and just do everything out of love and passion and who knows, di ba? So, ayun! Salamat for uh, hearing my talk. Salamat for asking me some questions. Uh, wag kayong magsamang suportahan ang uh, Balete City Pinoy Video Game.